Thank you. Radical Yobades. Radical Yobades. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome everyone to our Thursday discussion. Thursday discussion. And uh, today we have uh, a very interesting topic. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. So, uh, I'll just do an opening prayer. We can raise our hands. Father God, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Almighty God, for this time, for this allotment of time, for us to learn and to dive deeper into your word. Our spirits are open, our hearts are ready to receive your word, and not, Father, not just to receive it, but to act on it. We thank you, Father, for who you are. We thank you for who you have always been in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So... Before I start, this is a discussion. Feel free to ask questions, you know, comment, and all of that fun stuff, you know. Because uh, it's a fellowship. We are here to fellowship together in the Holy Ghost. We are here to discuss the Word of God. So if you have a point, you have a question, you didn't understand anything, you can always uh, comment in the section, on the comment section on Instagram, on Facebook and YouTube. And those who are in the room, you can always, you know, raise your hands or say and say something. So, without wasting any time, let's, let's get straight into the word. And uh, I'm going to start by reading... Um, so there, there, there are a couple of Bible scriptures that I kind of touched on or that I read on our Tuesday prayer session. And one of them, I'm not going to read uh, them again. Uh, I'm just going to paraphrase them. One of them is being uh, Genesis 1 verse 26, um, which talks about... God saying, let us make men in our own image and in our likeness. And uh, we, and then I explained a little bit that when God said, let us make men in our image and in our likeness, he, say, he was saying, let us make men in our character, in our behavior, how we, how we do things, we being Father, Son, and, uh, no, sorry, Father, Holy Spirit, and the Word. You know, uh, he, he was saying, let us make men in our mannerism. And then that is our in our likeness. And then in our image, someone who looks like us. So when you look at yourself, you know, God has two eyes. He has two hands because you are made in his image. And we kind of discussed and uh, touched a little bit on that one. So... Uh, now, after that recap, we can, uh, okay, we can now get into the matter of the day. And um, the topic for today, the topic for today is prosukomai. And uh, as we dive deeper, deeper in as we get as time moves on we we'll understand what that means and what that word is but um before that i would like to read a couple of scriptures uh, my first scripture being um let's see da, 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 radically about this my first scripture being first corinthians 2 verse 11 first corinthians 2 verse 11 And 1 Corinthians 2 verse 11, it says, For what man knoweth the things 
of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man by the but the spirit of god and the spirit of god as we know him he is the holy spirit so here uh, we are reading that no one knows the mind the the mind of god except for the spirit of god what is this is just saying is that uh for you to know what god is doing and what god's plan is in the world you need to communicate with the holy spirit you somehow need to communicate with the holy spirit so that you guys can discuss and you know you some you need to communicate with the holy with the spirit of god because he is the one who knows the mind of god that's what the scripture is this that's what the scripture is saying and um uh uh i'll just read it in the let's see um i'll just read it in the tpt and it says after all who can really see into a person's heart and know his hidden impulses except for that person's spirit so it is with god his thoughts and secrets are only fully understood by his spirit the spirit of god so here in the um, tbt is just illustrating uh giving us a more uh definite way i would say of understanding what the scripture is saying so it's saying to know the things of god you need the holy spirit to know what god is doing in your life and where the direction of your life should be you should know you should see it is through the holy spirit because he's the one who knows the mind and the plans of god and then uh for my Second scripture, I am going to read, uh, let us see, Radically Amandi Dia Shikadish, Rabba Dia Shikadia Shi, Dedia Shukadish, Rabba Dia Shikayam. So, the second scripture that I'm going to read. Uh, I'm going to read from 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14 and it, and it reads the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God in the communion and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all Amen. Uh, so this is the KJV. And then it says the second epistle of the Corinthians was written from uh, Philip, a city of Macedonia by Titus and Lucas. But then my emphasis is on uh, where it says and communion of the Holy Ghost. Uh, be with you all hear what we are reading uh we hear that apostle paul uh we hear that uh in the second corinthians they're saying the communion of the holy the communion um of the holy ghost so now our question is why would i need to commune with the holy ghost why would i need to have that communion and uh if you read in the let me just open it in the in the greek rendering which is Second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14. Second Corinthians 13 verse 14. And it says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost. And if you check the word communion there, it's the word koinonia, which means uh, a partnership. You know, uh, so a communication, an understanding, you know, a oneness with the Holy Spirit. So when we read in Corinthians where it says, and the communion, uh, communion uh, of the Holy Ghost, what it's what uh, the Bible is simply talking about, it's talking about a partnership. When you and the Holy Spirit, you have that communion, you have that unity, you are moving, uh, you are moving together, you know. 
and why now the question is why would you need to commune with the holy ghost as we read also in the book of corinthians we read that only the spirit of god knows the mind of god so the reason why you are communing with the holy ghost is to know what god is doing it is to know the mind of god so you can't know the mind of god if you don't commune with the holy ghost you need to commune you, you need to have that communion that partnership you know a partnership uh goes beyond talking to someone it's now you having a certain type of relationship with the holy ghost you know so that's what we are here and um and the greek rendering uh the translation uh it's koinonia you know a partnership with the holy ghost so yeah so and then so now we understand why we need to commune with the holy spirit we understand why we need to communi why why we need that communion of the holy spirit is also read in uh corinthians that he the whole the holy ghost the spirit of god he is the one who understands and who knows the mind of god so you know we need to communicate with that and then if you um continue reading the scriptures you hear you hear again in first uh corinthians 40 uh in uh first corinthians uh 14 you hear uh you hear apostle paul saying i thank my god i speak with tongues more than ye all yet in the church i had uh i had rather speak uh five words uh let's see so yeah so first corinthians 14 verse 18 said i thank my god i speak with tongues more than ye all so now you are hearing apostle paul i i would put it in in a manner of speaking that he's bragging that he speaks in tongues more than ye all and the moment that he speaks like this it gives us an understanding why he prospered in his ministry why even in the times of trouble when it seems like if you were put in the same position he was still filled with joy you understand he's saying that i speak in tongues more than he or so he's simply saying if you compile yourself together if you bring the person you think prays the most bring the person you think he speaks in tongues the most i speak more tongues than him and where do we get tongues these are ministrations from the holy spirit you hear that um in the bible says that the the holy spirit will give you utterances you know so you understand that um Apostle Paul, what he's simply saying, he's simply saying that I commune more with the Holy Spirit, which means I know the mind of Christ more. I know the mind of God more than anyone in his, in this room. Why? Because I'm constantly in that fellowship. I'm constantly, you know, downloading information from God, knowing what the mind of God is, knowing what knowing what God is saying in that minute, in that hour, you know, because I speak in tongues more than you all, which gives us an understanding you understand why apostle paul was chief of the apostles because you you hear him he's he's telling you you know he's it's an he's now making it an open secret you know when someone says let me give you the tools to my success this was apostle paul giving giving us the tools to his success so now we now we have an understanding that there is something that we need to do you know which means we need to constantly communicate with the, we constantly need to communicate with God hear, hear, hearing his thought hearing his thoughts as you know saying I you know I was this this other time um I was thinking but if I am communicating with God does it what what does it mean do, do I have to sit down do I have to like walk in my room and say sentences like uh, how are you so holy ghost what is happening today like is it a physical thing does it happen where wait where, where does it happen which brings us to the scripture of the scripture of the day and i'm going to be reading from uh luke one it's a very i think i've read the scripture during our prayer sessions um quite a number of times so it's luke 18 rather luke 18 verse 1 and it says and he spake a parable unto them to this end 
that men ought always to pray and not to faint. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. So men ought always to pray and not to give up, you know. Uh, so in other words, when you stop praying, you faint and uh you know, you are, give, you are giving up on yourself. Be weary, you know. So, but then the word that I want us to focus on is the word pray. Which is our subject, our subject case, prosukomai. And it is made up of two words. Uh, the first word uh, being um, pros. And uh, what this word me what this word means? Uh, just give me a minute. Le karabadiya so, rabadiya si, re de kila mandiya so kades, ra de kila mandiya so. So the word prose, it's um, what it means. It's it's a prop. It's a preposition of direction. What that simply means is that it is direct. It it is a it is a directive word. Let's say when I say above, when I say to, when I say towards, that's a uh, a directive preposition. It's a preposition of direction. So here, when you, when in uh, the way that the word is used, it means that you are face to face with someone, you know, and. Here we are, uh, if you read uh, the scripture very clearly, it says men ought always to pray. And now you already have your answer. Then who do you pray? Who do you pray to? You pray to God, you know. So what the, what he is talking, it's talking about being face to face with God, which brings, brings me to what I said um last week i ex i said this i said i mentioned this point that when you are praying we are communicating to god so now we here we are being told prayer is talking face to face with god and that gives you already a different mindset so now the question is when you will i'll give you an example when is the president of your country when it's a king or whoever you highly esteem if they come to you and they're spe you're speaking to them face to face how do you start the conversation how do you end the conversation who does the talking more and how should the conversation go you know um, so that's what we are talking for when uh, we are talking on prosukomai it's made up of two words and the first one being pros it's uh, a directive preposition for uh, showing us whom we are talking to and the manner that we are talking to. He ain't speaking of speaking face to face with God, talking face to face to God. And then um, the other word that uh, makes up um, prosukomai la rabadia sukades rade kelabadis. Rote kela badia sukaya di sekiado robe de di sekadia sekai rabadis roki la mande di sokalia bades rode dia sekades is the word ekomai and um echo my what this word means it's called a middle voice of a primary verb and what this word means which is probably the best part of uh the word all of the whole word it, it means a lot but then this is the one that like spoke to me the most uh it's echo my and what this word means it means that uh i'll put it in this way it means I am talking to someone, but at the same time, it seems that that same person is talking is talking with me. So what that what that word describes? It describes uh, a state of being. Uh, if I can read it in what it uh, what the mid what uh, what the word means uh, in the English dictionary. Rabadi si kaliabades, rabe kerabadia so, rabe dia si kades. So, uh, so what it means? It's like, let's say you're a policeman, and there's a policeman and a thief. 
So the word prosukomai, it means it denotes that the subject is both an agent of action and somehow connected with the action. So what the word means, it's the it's where the word uh, prosuche comes from. That when you are speaking, you are speaking from things that are coming from with you. Yes, it's you who's saying those words, but then at the same time, those words are you. Those words are coming from you. That's it. Would it also make sense, you know, when God say, "Let us make men." in our own image and our likeness and you hear that in john in john 1 it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god so when god was speaking he was speaking himself the words he was saying he was saying himself that is what the word echo my implies it my it implies that i am both the agent and i'm also the action that i'm also the action that is coming forth so now we hear you're speaking face face to face with god but at the same time time the words that you are speaking you are speaking yourself you are you are, you are speaking yourself you know it's like you are letting your it's your you are letting yourself out so when i say my you know that the my that i'm speaking yes it's a words that going out but that is also star going out which give which brings which implies that you only pray what you have in the on the inside of you you only pray what you have on the inside of you so if you don't have the word of god Whatever that is you are praying, you know, you, can, you, you hear a lot of things. I used to say wrong prayers a lot of times when I was growing up. Like, God, I'm suffering. How should I get out of this? So it means when I'm saying, God, I'm suffering, I'm saying what I am, you know. I'm speaking myself out. So, which means if you, for us to make the right prayers, we need to have the right information. And where do we get the right information? As a Christian, as a born again person, we get the right information from the word of God. Now, which gives, which brings us to the question, who is the word of God? What is the word of God? And you hear, and we hear in, uh, uh, in uh, John 1 verse 14 where it says and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and the same word we uh, we read uh, what Jesus was saying I'll go to the father you know I'll go to the father and pray that he sends you a helper which means he was saying when he was saying that he was saying I'll go to the father and he'll send you someone who's exactly like me so, which means he was saying, when you are now praying, you pray with information. You know, that's why, that's why the word of says, once, uh, where once we are in Christ, we are, we are new creatures. Behold, all things have passed away and all things have become new, which means we are now product of the word of God. And if we are products of the word of God, when we are praying, when, what are we praying? We are praying the word of God. That's why, uh, if you read, uh, uh Rabbit, yeah. So that's why you read in the, that's why you if you read in the scripture it says, Come boldly to the throne of grace. If you read that scripture very nicely and then you study it, you know, you you know the reason why it's saying come boldly to the throne of grace, it's because God has already equipped you with a righteousness. He has already equipped you with something that allows you to get there to the throne of grace and obtain mercy, which means now when you're going there when you're saying i'm here to obtain mercy what you're simply implying you're saying i'm here to take myself because as we described the word echo my it's you are both the action and the agent so the words that you are speaking you are speaking you are saying words out you're communicating with god but also you know you are saying yourself out when you that's why it's important to that's why it's important to we hear apostle paul saying i speak in tongues more than you all why because he knows that only the holy spirit knows the mind of god and if it is only the holy spirit that knows them knows the mind of god the more i communicate with him i become more like him before me the more i have a communion with him so when i now going when i'm now going face to face with god i'm exactly being like jesus you here in Romans, uh, uh, where uh, Jesus thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And if you notice, what well, there's only one thing that Jesus did constantly. He always prayed. He always prayed. He always prayed. Why? He was. He knew where his character was drew for, was drawn from. It was drawn from God. So he oh, he obviously thought it not robbery. Imagine you spend so much time with your best friend, and people miss when people see you, they are seeing your best friend. You know, you won't say. Ah, 
ah, you know, I'm not really here. No, your actions are showing us how you speak, the way you speak is showing us who you are you know so now when you communicate more with god you hear the you hear um apostle paul saying i speak in tongues more than he oh he's saying if you look at my character the re i now have a more you know i've accepted this salvation and i've walked in it so when you see me speaking i'm speaking exactly how jesus would speak you know if you uh, if you read in first corinthians the last two chapters you hear you hear apostle paul say the things when he was talking about marriage and uh that is better not for someone not to be given into marriage if we read clearly before he said those words before he said those things he said these things i didn't hear them from god I'm speaking them from my own, you know. I'm speaking why because God has trusted me with with His word. You, you, if you hear, once you hear a man saying that God has trusted me, I can now say my own thoughts and not things that God is telling me directly. It means that He understood you where his character was being drawn from. He understood that the information that he was getting from, he was getting it from the Holy Spirit. You know, so he's exactly what he was saying. Even if God himself was to come down, God will give you the same advice. Because if, if, if that wasn't the case, definitely God would have said something. So when we are talking about prosukomai, we are praying, we are talking about going face to face with God. Talking to God face to face, and what do you talk? Why? How? How? You know? What are you saying when you're talking face to face to God? We hear that the it what when we are saying we're saying talking face to face with God, saying things that you have, saying who you are. It's a speaking from a place of what you have. Like I mentioned last time, that's we understand that uh, in Genesis one uh, verse uh, Genesis one verse two when God was creating the heaven, he first imagined it, you know, he first thought about it, he imagined it, imagined creating the image in his head, in, in, his, in his mind, and then he said, let there be, and it's very interesting, if you, if you read it nicely, Genesis 1 verse 2, it says, it is the spirit that was hovering upon the surface of the deep, it was the Holy Spirit himself, you know, constantly imagining, constantly imagining, why, it, that's why it makes sense that it is only the Holy Spirit, like we read in the scriptures, who knows the mind of God, which means for us, so we, when you are praying, the reason why it seems that your prayers are not being answered, the reason why it seems that the things that you've been praying for for quite some time, they're not being answered is because you have the wrong information inside of you. Because we explained prayer, say, we're saying you're talking face to face with God. You're communicating with God. But the things that you're saying outside are the things that you, are, that you already have. You're speaking who you are. So if very surely when you're now, when you're now communicating with God, uh, good morning, God, I, I'm here today. So God, I'm suffering god is like yeah you're speaking what you are you're speaking suffering because that's the information we have which is why it is important to always have the word of god and if you read uh jude 1 verse 20 it says but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith play, praying in the holy ghost building up yourselves on your most holy faith and where does faith come from? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we come again to speaking exactly what you have in, on the inside of you when you are praying. You are saying who you are. You are both the agent, the action, and the subject. The words that you are speaking, the words you are communicating with God. You know, you're speaking from a standpoint of faith. So you can't pray without faith. And where does faith come from? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So now you have to, now, now the next question I would ask myself, you know, when I'm hearing things like this, I'll, I'll ask the question, so what is hearing? 
Is hearing, hearing an audible voice, someone say calling my name something. What exactly is hearing? Is it a physical thing or is it a spiritual thing? Because the word now, it's, it is quite, it's very interesting. You know, you have had people who are ministering the word of God and then they'll, while they are talking to you, they are you are they're sharing the word of god with you they'll tell you that you know at the same at the when i was telling you this this when i was sharing this with you i was hearing god i was talking to god i was communicating with god which makes us understand that when you are when we are talking about praying when you are when we are talking about praying it's not something that is physical it's something that is very spiritual because how can a person saying i was talking to god right now but then ex at the same time they were talking to at the same time they were talking to you you know you get what i'm saying you can't just say when uh, my little sister comes i'm talking to her i'm talking to her, and then i'm like you know when i was talking to you right now right now i was also talking to mom she was saying she needs this she needs this it doesn't make sense unless it is it has a it's a spiritual substance so when you're talking about hearing we are talking about when god drops something inside your spirit when god drops something inside your heart you know all of of a sudden you have a revelation of something you are seeing images god is showing god is showing you certain things it's you know yes it is an audible voice it, it isn't this it is a voice that you hear but it's a voice that is heard by your spirit you know so when you are talking about prosuko mai, uh, prosuko mai it is praying facing God, standing face to face with God. I would ask you this question, you know, so many times I've also asked myself this question, but if God was to come and he was to talk to me face to face, hey, will I really stand? What exactly will happen? You know, but here we are here we are here when uh jesus is speaking in luke 18 verse 1 he's saying men ought always to pray men ought always to be face to face with god and if that's the case when i'm when am i going to cook when am i going to clean when am i going to study which means it's not just only when you you need you know i i, I this is how i started praying um I remember the first time I came to Strubens Fellowship and I'm hearing you need to set time for prayer. You need to set time, set time for prayer. And then as I started praying more, I, I, was, I was like, so you're saying when I set time to pray, when I say every time I pray at 5.30, am I only secluding God to five to, from 5.30? That's the only time he has you know, I have for him. That's the only time that's for God. Until I started growing more in the word of God. I started growing more. Then I realized wherever I am, I can pray. Whatever I'm doing, I can pray. You know, you need to let God invade your life to the extent that everything that you do, God can tell you, stop right now. You're in, you know, you're in an exam. You, you, you imagine the most impossible case scenarios. You are in an exam. You haven't even written anything. God tells you, stop, go and pray. That is when God has invaded your life. You know, you now you don't have a time. It, the thing is, it's a good thing to set a time to pray. But then, you know, saying that I pray in the morning at this time. That's why we also have our hour of prayer. And then we have our Tuesday prayer session. But then as time goes on, it turns out that routine, God changes. And why is it changing? It's because the information that you have. The revelation has grown. Yes, you have a, your time set apart, but you realize after the one hour of praying in Strubens, you just want to keep going. You just want to continue. You just want to continue. That is what we are reading in Jude, in, in Jude 1 20, saying, pray, pray in your most holy faith. Most holy faith, which means there's a, hol there's a holiness that is more. And there's the holiness that is. Your holy faith. There's just your holy faith, your more holy faith, and your most holy faith. Why is it most holy faith? Because revelation is progressive. One time you started praying 15 minutes and then you keep reading the word of God. You keep increasing the knowledge. And then you hear when you hear when uh, uh, Jesus went to pray in the garden and he took uh, a few of his disciples and they fell asleep. He said, you couldn't pray for one hour. Now you realize, hey, I've been praying for 15 minutes. God is saying you couldn't even pray for one hour. Now we increase your time. You realize, 
all of a sudden when you are cooking in the kitchen you just feel like praying tongues just come out you know you're just speaking the word of god you're just speaking the word of god and i would like to you know you're just you're just saying the word of god things are just coming out this is when we are now praying in your most holy faith because revelation is progressive that's why we have the new testament and the old testament both those things saved so many souls but then when you you now there's a now new testament there's now a greater revelation than that that was there so when when here when you read in Jude 1 verse 20 saying pray in your most holy faith that most holy faith is coming from the word of God and as you continue to read the word of God as you continue to read the word of God your prayer life changes all of a sudden you were praying for 20 minutes now you are praying for 30 minutes you are praying for 30 minutes now you go for an hour you are praying for an hour now it's 10 hours but after those 10 hours you see yourself when you are driving when you're going to work when you're doing your schoolwork tongues are just coming out confessions are just coming out things are just coming out why you have loaded yourself with the information you have now created you have now mastered the communion that partnership with the holy spirit that any time any second the holy spirit you are you are hearing him all the time you are hearing him all the time he's he is dropping revelation you are understanding the word of god you know there's a certain point where you just every time you just keep quiet you just you you are just sitting you just say you know what let me relax you hear you're meditating it's just the word you are opening verses you know there's a time uh i still remember when i started diving deeper into the word of god i think it was 2019 i will be in class literally uh the lecturer is talking he's saying what he's saying and i'm just quiet and i can see them i can see my my bible is not there i left my bible in my room but uh, i I can see it. I can see myself opening Luke 5. I'm seeing, I'm going, I'm going, I'm connecting dots and dots. I'm hearing the Holy Spirit saying, no, you, you need to understand it this way. It's like this. This is when you now have that koinonia. You have a partnership with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because you understood that the Holy Spirit is the only one who knows the mind of God. And if you keep reading, that's why you are... Uh, if you read again in the book of Corinthians, you hear Apostle Paul saying, "Who has known the Who has known the mind of God?" And then it continues that he may instruct he may instruct him. Then it says, "But we have the mind of Christ. Why do we have the mind of Christ?" Jesus said, "I'll go to the Father and I'll send someone." When he was saying God will send someone, he's saying he'll send someone exactly like me which is the holy spirit so the reason why we have the same mind of we have the mind of god that we may instruct him is because we have the holy ghost we have received the holy ghost we have been birthed from the word and we have received the holy spirit so when we, whatever i'm thinking whatever i'm saying whatever comes out of me yes it is coming out of me that is me but it, but it's the word of God. So when I'm speaking out, I'm speaking the word of God. So the, when I, I I go boldly to the throne of grace, I'm praying, I'm speaking face to face with God. It makes sense. Why? Because if God is the word and I am speaking from the word, what, and I'm speaking from the word and I'm speaking out the word of God, then what am I? I am the word. That's why you hear in Psalms, I have said, ye are God's. So when go, when you're going when you when you when you're praying it's not just uh, a thing that you do that Strupens has a prayer session on Monday and Strupens has a prayer session on Tuesday no this is personal you need to take it too personally it's so serious you are, you yourself you're being face to face with God you're communicating with God you are you know you are you are talking to God Let's say you don't. Let's say you understand that you are talking face to face to God. If God was to come right now, wherever He is in heaven, if He is to come, and then He says, "Hazel, how are you? How how would you address Him? How would you feel? 
That is exactly what it should be like when you are praying. You are going there with reverence, you know. That's why you read in the old, you you read uh, in uh, in the synoptic gospels that God is seeking the, those that worship true worshippers, those that worship Him in spirit and in truth. What's the truth? Jesus says, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." And he is the word of God and he is God, which means the truth that he's talking about, he's to God is showing those that worship him in his word, those that have consumed the word of God, that you cannot differentiate between the word of God and the person because why? They have that koinonia, they've had that partnership, they are now one. Those that worship him in spirit and in truth, those who know whom they are talking to and what they are saying. That's why you also give, that's why also when you come, when you join a prayer session, there are prayer points. Those prayer points, we are not just, it's for it to be in your head. For you to be intentional when you are praying. Because trust me, when the king, when you are, when you are meeting the queen of England, if you have nothing meaningful to say, just know you are being tossed out of that room. Because you have nothing meaningful, you are just wasting time. So if it, this is this is this is just a queen, not a queen of your own country. If my if I might add that, what about God, the one who created you? When you are saying you are going to pray, you need to understand that you are going face to face with God, and you are only going to speak the things that are you, the things that you have inside of you, the things that you have in your spirit. So if you have movies, if you have Telemundo and what's other if you, and some other cartoons, trust me, you are going to be going face to face with God, talking Telemundo, and that's just a waste of time. And you wonder, ha. Ah, my life is not changing. Things are not moving. How can they move? Why do? How are you expecting to? How are you expecting them to move? You know, prayer. There's a uh, I'm, I'm a power. A great man of God said said this very statement, and it stuck with me. He said, "Prayer. It's a gift." The fact that you have the ability to go face to face with God, it's a precious opportunity. That we have been given. Going face to face with the one that created you. When he was saying let us make men in our own image. He was talking about you. He was talking about. He was talking about everything. You know. And he's, he, he's, he's saying you, you. He's saying you. You know you can come. You can come. We can discuss. We can talk face to face. And, you, and there's no intention with that. We need to be intentional when you're going to talk to God. And when you say, you know what, I'm going to start praying at 5 p.m. Make sure that you are at 5 p.m. you are there. Because uh, be rest assured, no king wants anyone late. Why would you? If, if the president was to say, I want you in my office right now. Are you going to be late? No, you won't be late. So why would you be late for, with an appointment with God? The one who created you. Why would you be late for that? And why are you going there with the wrong information? Which means we need to consume the word of God. We need to have the knowledge. We need to build our faith. We need to grow. We need to grow from one level of glory to another. In the word of God, grow so that when we, we know when you when you now pray. You are praying with intention and you know that your prayer has already been answered. Why? Because you know what is praying inside of you. You know where you are getting the utterances. You hear, the, you hear Apostle Paul saying, I speak in tongues more than ye all. I'm d I, download the I download a spiritual language from the Holy Spirit more than all of you. Because he understood the word of God. He kept hearing, he kept hearing, he kept hearing. His faith kept on increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing because until he became one with the word. It is very, it is very important, you know. And I, I always used to ask my question, so how, how do I do this prayer thing? How, like, how, how do I start? If you have the word of God, you can pray. You need the word of God. And when you have the word of God, you can pray. You hear in John 14 verse 16 says, And I pray, and I will pray, 
the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Another comforter, implying that him, Jesus, was a comforter, but he is saying, I'm going to heaven. And because if I, if I imagine if Jesus was still here, he would still probably be in Israel. He can't be here in Cape Town. He can't be in Zimbabwe. He can't be in Tanzania. He can't be in Angola. But he's saying, I'll bring you another comforter, implying that God is, Jesus is telling you, I am a comforter, but I'll bring you exactly another one like me. And he will stay with you forever. Which means even like when you are praying, you know, uh, it is very interesting, you know, when uh, when I say that we are praying, when you are praying, you are speaking face to face with God. Have we have we ever asked ourselves, but where is this God that you are speaking face to face with? Where is He? And then we hear that we have received the Holy Ghost, and who is the Holy Ghost? He is God. So you are saying that when I'm speaking face to face, I'm speaking with the God that is inside me. How does, how does it work? How does it make sense? Which shows us the beauty of it. You know, there's a scripture that says our lives are hidden in Christ. So you are saying I'm praying to a God who's inside of me, but at the same time, I'm inside that God. Which means there are things we need to understand when we are praying. We need to be conscious of what we are doing and it needs to be very intentional. We need the word of God. We need to pray knowing whom we are praying to, what we are praying for and how we pray. You know, that's, it's very interesting. And the, even when we pray, if you read the New Testament, it says his answers are yes and amen. When you're praying, no, no man, as long as you have prayed, as long as you have gone to God and say, you know what, hey God, I'm suffering. His answer is yes, and his answer is amen. That, that's what you prayed, <laughs> you know? Which means when we are praying, we need to be conscious of what we are doing. We need to be there in the moment. Like, what, what, what the word that I'm saying, I'm speaking to God. I'm speaking to the one who created me. And he says, anything that I pray for, surely I'll receive it. If you think I'm joking, keep saying I'm suffering today. Keep saying I'm suffering and see if you won't suffer. If you don't suffer, you can somehow contact me and I'll give you, I'll give you a gift. I don't know some. And I'm also not speaking of these things because I also, to some extent, when I was still a babe, I would say in the Lord, I used to say a lot of stuff and then wonder why is my life moving in this direction? Why are these things happening? Until I changed how I spoke, I kept studying the word of God. I kept on praying. I was in constant fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Some of the things, you know, it's, it is very funny. You hear someone, I, I used to say, Think that when you hear someone saying I'm rich, I'm prosperous, I used to think that's bragging. Like that's lit. People just, you know, people just like to show off. Why is this person showing off? I still even remember when I was in high school. There was a girl. Uh, she was talking about where she was going to go for university. I got so mad. I got, I got so mad that day. I was like, why does she need to brag? Like at the end of the day, we are all going to, we are all going to university anyways. That was before I grew, until I realized that the things that we speak, those are the things, when you're speaking, you're not just speaking words, it's substance. Like I said, you are both the object, you are all uh, the agent, and you are the action. It, all of it, it's you. So when you're speaking a word, I'll be rest assured, you're speaking yourself. So when you say, I'm rich, you are speaking richness. Yes, you are rich. And you, if you speak poverty, hey, things are very hard. I don't even have money. Yeah, you're speaking yourself. You're speaking your no money self. 
It is you, which implies that every every word that we speak, why we need the Holy Spirit, why we need the word of God, the Holy Spirit, not exactly the mind of God, and not just the mind of God concerning nations, the mind of God concerning my life, concerning Hazel's life, concerning Kudzi's life, concerning Batsi's life, concerning each and every one of us is that. So once you have now known the mind of God, you've now had that koinonia, that partnership, that relationship with him. You would talk face to face with God. God is telling you, you know what, the direction that you are moving, you know, this is the direction that you, this is the direction you should move. Well, you know, you hear when, uh, you hear a man of God, he was, he was told by God, uh, Abraham was told by God that, uh, go to a city and then he just picked the stuff and then he just went. What if he went the wrong way? Say, what if you go the right, the wrong direction? I will hear a voice telling me, "Go it this way." What is that? What kind of man is that? If God was to tell you, you know what, you need to stop what you're doing right now. Pick. We need to go to, for example, Ukraine. You're looking at but God does this. What's happening in Ukraine? We know uh, there are still souls that I need to win here in Cape Town. There are still things I need to do. This is when, when we have that lack of communion with God. We have that lack of fellowship. You know, I read, uh, if you read in, uh, if you read in 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14, it says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you. Amen. Amen. And the communion of the Holy Ghost. How do you commune with the Holy Ghost? How do you get in partnership with the Holy Ghost? How does that happen? Here, if you if if you really read uh, just in the context of it, you hear that oh apostle Paul here, the word of God is talking about prayer. We need to constantly pray, constantly pray. You need to pray, you need to pray, you need to pray. Luke 18, verse 1, Jesus is saying, Men ought always to pray. Always, ought, always, what is always? Always is every time, every minute, every second, every day of your life. You need to pray. And I described what prayer is. It's communicating, talking face to face with God, which means each and every single day of your life, you need to be talking face to face with God. Every second, every hour everything that you have you need to constantly talk face to face with god and to talk face to face right with god is when you have the word of god inside of you when you have the word of god inside of you you need to have the word of god inside of you otherwise we are pro making prayers amiss and we are saying the wrong prayers we are doing the wrong we are talking to god saying the wrong things Imagine going, imagine going in front of a king and you tell, you know, king, you know, I can actually bomb you right now. Whether you're joking or you're not, you're getting out of there and you might be given a couple of years in jail. What more when you're talking to God? What are you saying with him? Are you intentional? Are you in that moment? Are you, are, is it conscious in your mind? Are you aware that you're talking face to face with the master, the one who created you, the one who created the heaven and the earth, the one who knows where your life is going and how your life should be? And if you don't, why don't you? Because trust me, the reason why people go to hell is because God just hates them and just forsook them. You know, if you read in the Bible, there's a, uh, there's a scripture that says, it is you who has made yourself an enemy with God in your mind. Which means if you just change that mindset that you know what, yeah, I know I've been doing the wrong thing, but I've been saved. I'm a born again Christian. God loves me. I'm a new creation. You know? I am of I am I am of the spirit. I live in the spirit. If you just change the, that mindset, 
the renewal of the mind by the word of God. You start saying the right things. You start praying the right prayers. You start communicating with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he knows the mind of God. And when you go to God, you need to go with the mind of God. You need to go with the same mind of God. And the, because the reason you are suffering, it's not because God wants you to suffer. It's because you are allowing yourself to suffer. You don't have the information that puts you out of that misery. If you have that information that puts you out of misery, you're not putting it to work. You hear in Romans it says with the with the with the with the heart man believes and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. All of it is talking about speaking when you're face to face with God. You're not just standing there face to face with God. You are speaking. What are you speaking? Where are you getting that information? What type of language are you using? You hear Apostle Paul saying, I speak in tongues more than you all. He's saying, I have a heavenly language. When I go to God, I know how to address him. I know exactly the words to say and how to say them, when to say them, and what time to say them. And when you're speaking face to face with God, like I said last time, it's not just you uttering words. God is talking to you. And I ask this question, when God is talking to you, does it mean that you need to keep quiet? So if, if it means I need to keep quiet, what happens to a person who's ministering and then they say, God is telling me something. I was talking to God right now. What, then what is that? Which means communication with God. It's, a, it's spiritual. You know, when you are speaking right now, when you're there, when you're speaking in tongues, radically about this, God is already dropping information. You are communicating with him. It's so important. I can never overemphasize the importance of communicating with God. The importance of prayer. And to pray with the right equipment, to pray with the right information, pray with the mind of God, with the word of God. And how do you get the mind of God? Through the Holy Spirit. If you have not received the Holy Spirit, what types of prayers have you been making? What things have you been talking to God about? Because surely the things that you are saying, if it's not from the Holy Ghost, where are you getting them from? Because we only had the only one who knows the mind of God is the Holy Ghost. So when you're going to talk to God, when you're saying you are, we are praying and you don't have the Holy Spirit, what are you talking to him about? What are you communicating? This shows us why things are not moving the way they should be moving in our life. Prayer is a very, very important subject. You know, I, I, I like... Uh, what my spiritual father said, he said, if you really want to understand what prayer is, you can just go, it's a digital world this time, you can just go on your phone and then type prayer and read on everyone who prayed, read on what prayer was and what is contained in prayer and do all those things because it's important to know so that you understand what you are doing. This is a very broad subject and we cannot finish all of it in one hour. But then I just, with this has been our, I would say, a second introduction. I'll keep emphasizing this. Prayer is communicating with God, going face to face with God. And you're going face to face with God. Like I said, the second, the second part of prayer. Pro sukomai, it's echo mai. And what echo mai is implying is that you are the object, you are the agent. So which means when you are you are praying with the, you are saying things that you already have, substance that is already coming outside of you. And if you don't have the word of God, then you are praying amiss. You're just wasting time and wasting words. Get into the word, study the word, understand it, and pray from a position of power. Because when you are praying from the word of God, when you are praying when you have the word of God, you are praying from a position of power. You understand what God is saying in that very minute, in that very moment, in, in that hour. It is important. It is very, very important because I'll ask you the direction you've been going into your life. Who has been telling you that, that direction if you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you don't have the word, if you don't pray? Are you sure you're doing the things that you should be doing? Are you sure you are where you're supposed to be? Because if you don't pray, how would you know? 
Who's giving you direction? If you don't have the Holy Spirit, where are you going? What are you doing it for? Like I said, the reason why people are suffering, the reason why a lot of bad things happen to people, it's not because God is making them happen. Most of the time, it's because people are allowing them to happen. They are saying it to happen. You hear someone say, yes, I'm so broke. Yes, guys, I don't have money. Yeah, you don't have money and it, you surely remain in that. You remain in that no money position. It will all constantly be there. Why? Because you don't have the mind of Christ. How do you get the mind of God, the mind of Christ? Through the word of God, through communing with the Holy Spirit. Because he knows the mind of God. So I urge us all to always pray, always go face to face with God, always study the word of God and commune with the Holy Spirit. Because we need to move from a place, we need to move from that standpoint, from that position of power. Because trust me, if you have the knowledge and the wisdom of God, no one can stand against you. No one can say anything to you. You hear people in the Old Testament, Moses, all those people parting the Red Sea. Those people, if you really think about it, if you like, I would like what uh, Batsy said this other time. If you really stand in front of the sea and say, see, and really look at it and try to part it, you want something and you would tell you, that, mm -mm, this is not it. But Moses had, he had, a de he had definitely downloaded information from somewhere. He had knowledge from somewhere. He had the mind of God. And you hear in the if you if you read in the in the Old Testament it says, and the Holy Spirit came and the Spirit of God came upon them. And the Spirit of God came upon them. Why was the Spirit of God coming upon them? Because he knows the mind of God. And the mind of God is the one that was imagining, that was imagining the sea. So he definitely knows the mechanics that parts the sea. So when he, when he just raises, he, he knew what he was doing. He, you know, if you have asked him, let's say maybe a couple of days later, can you please go and do it again? He'll tell you a different story. So I urge, I urge us all to pray. Study the word of God. Pray with the right equipment. Let us go boldly to the throne of grace. And... Receiving the Holy Spirit, it doesn't take two hours. In the book of Romans, it says, With the heart, men believe it. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. All you need to do is, Holy Spirit, I receive you into my life. And you have already received the Holy Spirit. So... I urge us all to pray, to go face to face with God, to study his word, so that when we are communicating with God, we know what we are saying. We know the information that we are saying, the word that we are saying, the mysteries that we are speaking. We, he, under, he, he knows that this one is definitely my child because the words is saying they are coming from me. Our lives changes. It will never be the same. We grow from one level of glory to another. Each and every day we are growing. Each and every day we are maturing in the spirit. But we all need to pray. Men ought always, always, men ought always to pray. We ought always to pray. There's no one who can ever say, I've, I've over prayed. Hey, sure, I've over prayed. Even after praying 24 hours, the next day God will still tell you, start again. Continue. So I urge us all to pray. I urge us all to pray. So I'll just say uh, a closing prayer. Radikali amande diaso. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father, for teaching us to pray. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. For he knows your mind, Father. So we have your mind because we have received him in our hearts. We have received him in our lives. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, Father, for the hearts that have been healed. We thank you for the lives that have been changed. We thank you because you are a good God. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, if there are people with questions and comments and uh, ideas, so if there are no questions, uh that was it from that was it from our service today it was on prayer prosukomai luke 18 verse 1 men ought always to pray it is important for us to always pray so we are not out of good news we're just out of time we believe in good news because we believe in god and don't forget, we have launched our website. Uh, you can oh, you can find uh, the link on Instagram, on Facebook, you know, and uh, just check it, check it out. And if you have any questions and anything you want to say, feel free to DM us um, on our social media platforms. Uh, we have a comment from Dudu. Says thank you. Uh, for such a beautiful and powerful session. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. I've also learned a lot of stuff that I didn't know about. Uh, so I thank God that you all learned today. Amen. So, yeah, that is us from Strubens tonight. Um, remain connected to stay protected. Good night. <laughs>